Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, we've had some uh, great announcements here at the air show, some uh, great airlines that uh, have chosen the uh, Pratt Sure Power, the gear turbofan, fan, including Turkish Airlines, which announced yesterday, Air Castle, Azul, CIT, Boca, and uh, we're very excited about uh, the new products that we've got going forward and the positioning that we've got in the, uh, in the overall marketplace. <coughs> now, with that said, Pratt is uh, entering a period of sustained revenue growth and sustained production growth, really driven by a, a great new product portfolio. Uh, in the commercial business, we've got our gear turbofan product, which is uh, really revolutionizing the commercial and regional uh, aerospace propulsion space. On our military side, we've got the F-135 engine, which powers the uh, Joint Strike Fighter, which uh, we think will be the dominant military plane uh, aircraft moving forward. And uh, Pratt Canada, we have a great product lineup, including the uh, PWC-800, which uh, was announced earlier last year as the propulsion for the new Gulfstream 500-600. Um, so I've got uh, a few key messages for you today. First of all is, is we do have industry-leading technology, and uh, as indicated by that great product portfolio, it's driven by the fact that we're delivering technology that delivers best value to our customers, and, and that is a, a great position for us to be in. Uh, secondly, is is uh, we are going to be entering the service uh, at the end of this year in the key platforms and the gear turbofan, and uh, really we we do think that we're uniquely positioned uh, on some absolutely premium uh, programs, and then uh, following uh, finally our uh, aftermarket services, uh, we are driving an aftermarket service business which really drives best value to the overall customer, and uh, I think you'll see these uh, messages and themes throughout the presentation. So, just as a reminder of our overall business, in 2014, Pratt did $14.5 billion in sales, $2.1 billion in EBIT across our three segments. Uh, we're roughly speaking about 50% large commercial engines, about 25% military engines, and about 25% Pratt Canada, which is our small engine division up in Montreal. We are, on, uh, we are going through a very significant uh, product transition in all of our key segments and our key programs are tracking well. Uh, in the large commercial engine business, the C-Series airplane and the Airbus A320 are both in the certification flight test phase and we expect them both to certify with their airframers in uh, the end of 2015. We also expect the Mitsubishi regional jet, the MRJ uh, aircraft, to initiate flight testing earlier this year. And we announced yesterday that we've started ground testing on the uh, engine for the E-Jet 2 series for Embraer, and um, so we're making very good progress there also. In our uh, small engine business, we're working with a significant number of airframers to develop new products. Uh, two key products are the Dassault uh, Falcon 8X, which uh, flew here yesterday, uh, powered by the Pratt Canada 307, and then also, as I mentioned earlier, the Gulfstream G500, G600 product powered by the uh, Pratt Canada 800. Both of those, those two airplanes are in the flight test program, are in flight test, and uh, with those programs, we expect to grow our market share in the large business jet market uh, to about 50% by 2020. So very well positioned again for growth. And then finally, in the military segment, uh, Joint Strike Fighters continue to make great progress. We expect this to be the largest military fighter program ever. We've delivered over 225 uh, engines. We're on our cost, and the Marine Corps will go operational this summer. So quite an exciting time for us at Pratt. Now, from a technology standpoint, as I said, I think we feel quite, uh, quite good about the technology <coughs> that we've brought to the market, and I think that's enabled these uh, great new positions. And a, a best example of this is what we've done with the gear turbofan. Now, on the geared turbofan product, uh, that engine is extremely fuel efficient. It will make its fuel efficiency targets at entry into service, and it's 16% uh, better than the V2500 product. Since the V2500 is a little bit better than the CFM56 right now, a couple percent, we're in the 16 to 18% range better than the current engines that are out there. Uh, we're also 50% reduction in overall emissions and a 75% reduction in the noise footprint. Now, yesterday we had a, a, a great uh, example here at the air show with the flight of the C-Series airplane, and uh, the great thing about that was, was you could see it, but you really didn't hear it. That was really a quite an impressive uh, example of, of how we've managed 
to work with the airframers to really set a new standard in terms of noise. Um, so we're in a very good position. Uh, we also, because of this technology and this position, we do think we're going to be in a leading position on our key programs with Airbus because we've got extra margin in that product. We have announced uh, thrust boost up to 35K and an additional 2% pit package which will be available in 2019. This is not new news. This is something we've actually been working on for the last year or two. But uh, it shows you the growth capability that we have in that product and the confidence we have in terms of building, bringing its fuel burn uh, home. Now the thing we like about this is we do think it will position us long term to have a sustained fuel burn advantage versus the competition as we go forward. So uh, really uh, great technology and uh, we feel quite good about that. Now, from a flight test perspective, we are flying with both Airbus and Bombardier on the GTF. We've got three different models flying, eight aircraft. We've had 5,000 flight hours, 19,000 hours of uh, testing in total, and 3,400 cycles. Now, we are uh, going through a temporary delay in flight testing with Airbus. I think it's been pretty widely broadcast that we had a minor manufacturing issue with a retaining clip. We expect that uh, clip part to be replaced in the next couple weeks, and we expect to start flying again. Not a uh, particularly difficult problem, and not one that uh, is uh, particularly onerous, but the type of thing you identify in this phase, and we'll move forward, and we don't expect a major uh, schedule issue associated with that at all. Now, we are also continuing to test engines to make sure that we're ready for service, including several engines <coughs> purely dedicated for service readiness. And uh, we expect that by the end of the year, by the time we're ready to enter revenue service, we'll have over 27,000 hours of testing, 46,000 cycles, and over 8,000 flight hours, all again intended to ensure that we have a very smooth entry into service. This chart really shows what our future commercial backlog looks like and also what our future installed commercial base is. The chart on the left shows our installed base of commercial engines as a function of time. And what you see here is, is we're entering a very substantial growth phase between the V2500 and the geared turbofan where our installed base will grow dramatically. And that's really driven by the fact that across the product family of geared turbofans on the C-Series, MRJ, Airbus, and Embraer, uh, we now have a backlog of approximately 7,000 engines. And uh, with the announcements of the show, we'll be at about a 7,000 engine backlog across the overall product family, which is a really very nice position to be in for a manufacturer right at the entry point in the service. So again, it shows the broad customer acceptance that we've had on the, uh, on the, uh, the overall program. Now, the Gear Turbofan is the sole source position for Bombardier, Embraer, and also MRJ. On the A320, we compete with the Leap. We've got about 50% market share on the A320 at this point in time. We've got about 70% of the A321s. And, um, you know, we're working with customers to provide the best value in the industry, and I think we do that at this point in time. Now, let me just shift gears for a second. One program that we're, uh, Pratt Canada is leading that we're very proud of is the new Gulfstream G500, G600. We think this is going to be the premium platform in its space, the large business jet space. Uh, the engine, the PwC 800, was uh, selected by Gulfstream. It was the first time Gulfstream had selected a manufacturer other than Rolls-Royce. Uh, the first flight was in May of this year. Uh, this engine uses a core that is common, part number common with the C-Series. And our strategy uh, to design a core that worked in both the GTF and the business uh, jet application has been extremely successful. Uh, and as I said, with this win and a couple of the other products we have, including the Dassault 8X, uh, our market share in the large business set, uh, jet market segment will increase to about 50%. And uh, we do expect a large number of these customers, over 90% of them, will take our premium service offering in this position. Uh, Joint Strike Fighter, this is an um, airplane and an engine that uh, I know most of you have written about at least one time or another. Uh, we do think this is a fabulous airplane. Uh, JSF program continues to make great progress. It will be the largest fighter program ever produced. We've delivered over 225 engines to date. The operational uh, fleet uh, average readiness for 2015 is at 96.3%, substantially above its target. Uh, we are on cost, and um, 
international interest in this program continues to grow. So we're, uh, we're very pleased about the overall positioning. We had a great uh, CEO conference with uh, all the key players and the member, uh, <coughs> the member nations on the program back in the uh, late May time frame. We also completed some trials on the WASP, which were extremely successful. And uh, the Marine Corps will go operational this summer, which will be a really key event for the overall program. And I give the Marines credit for taking the most technically difficult and most technically advanced version of the airplane and bringing it to uh, operational first. It's a typical Marine type of thing to do. Now, based on this, um, and based on our overall uh, uh, progress, we are transitioning from product development into the early part of our production ramp, and from 2015 to 2020, we expect our production of large engines to increase from about 800 engines this year to over 1,800 large engines, with about two-thirds of that being our gear turbofan product, but and again, <coughs> this is by 2020. And at the same time, our production volume on the JSF will also more than double. So to accomplish this, we put a significant amount of energy in our production readiness, including de-risking our supply chain by using multiple sources on all of our key components. And in our own factories, we've invested over a billion dollars in low-cost, high-skill locations, such as the East Coast in the United States, Maine, Georgia, Poland, and China. And uh, we do watch to make sure that we match the investment profile on our programs to our actual uh, capital investment. Uh, so um, really, it's, uh, I think we feel very good about our overall production readiness and uh, ability to deliver. We've, uh, we've spent a lot of time and energy on this in the last couple of years, and uh, we're, we're well positioned to be able to do that. We've also put a significant amount of uh, effort into entry into service on our gear turbofan, which we expect to be at the very end of this year. Uh, over the next three years, the GTF will be deployed in 40 airlines worldwide. Roughly 45% of these are not current Pratt customers, so we've done a, a very good job in terms of expanding our customer base. So to facilitate this, we put in a formal seven-step gated process to work with airlines to ensure that we have a smooth entry into service. process starts roughly 18 months before entry into service, so when airlines start flying, they've got the right tooling, the right equipment, and the right processes to smoothly introduce the product into commercial operation. So again, a key emphasis point for us. Then uh, we also are working very hard, and we are transforming our, our commercial aftermarket. We're transforming it to a service-based model. Um, and that's really from what I'll call this is the legacy transactional model of selling spare parts. And in the service model, uh, we support customers' fleets under fleet management programs, and uh, we like this model a lot. Uh, we make profit on this model by providing services to the customers under the fleet programs, and uh, the profitability of those programs improves with the increase in reliability of the engine. So the longer the, uh, the engine stays on wing, the more reliable it is, the uh, better profitability we have, but also the better profitability of the airlines. And what that does is align our objectives with the airlines' objectives. Now, I'll be very careful here and very clear. We still will offer customers transactional uh, aftermarkets. We're committed to do what the customer wants. We just feel the best value proposition is in our FMPs, and it's the value proposition that matches our objectives with our customer objectives and makes sure that they're aligned, and this is a key element <coughs> for us. So the chart also shows kind of the transition of how we've done uh, aftermarket as a function of time. Uh, PW4000 has roughly 40% of its fleet under a fleet management program. The V2500 moves up to 60%. GP7000, which is a joint venture we have with uh, General Electric, is about 75%. And right now, we've got 80% uh, of the gear turbofan programs under some form of fleet management plan. So you can see as a history of time, we have transitioned this way. We like that. We think that uh, higher and higher percentages under fleet management plan are the right way for the customers to go because we think that's where the best value will be. And again, as I mentioned earlier, that it does maintain, um, it, it maintains a alignment between our business model and the airline's business model. So we think this is a win-win situation. Now, our backlog for service programs is currently up to $57 billion. That's increased by 50% from 2010. And 25% of that backlog is for our gear triple trend program, even before it's entered service. Now, why does this provide best value for the customer? 
first of all is, is we are highly incentivized to make sure that the engines are as reliable as possible, uh, frankly, because we pay the support program for it. And uh, to, to ensure that, we put a lot of time and effort to make sure that we can extend time on wing, we can match the service condition of the engine to the operating environments, we bring big data in to be able to analyze the, um, the operation of each engine and optimize the, the, uh, the uh, service for that specific engine. So we think there's a lot of upside on this. It also brings predictable cost to the airline. The airline knows exactly what they're going to pay over a long-term period of time for their services. And then finally, we can customize the service offering for the airline including doing pretty much everything they want. So we do think that this is a win-win model for us, and we do think that this is the key element of how we'll go forward in the business. Now, with that said, uh, in summary, we really do feel very confident and very pleased that our industry-leading technology is driving change in the industry and has helped us, enabled us, to put key new product into the marketplace on some great premium platforms. We are going to enter service in this next year on some of those key platforms. And again, our aftermarket, we really are driving towards a customer service model, a service model where we provide best value to the customer and make sure that we have long-term aligned goals. And with that said, I flip to the last chart, which is our original logo at Pratt & Whitney, considering this is the 90 years anniversary of the business and uh, we're quite proud of it and uh, I think I'm open for questions.